P-8A Poseidon is a maritime patrol and reconnaissance aircraft. We focus on maritime surveillance, anti-submarine warfare, anti-surface warfare and search and rescue operations and we're conducting these operations around the world every day. In the recent past, we have uh, had a multi-nation exercise in Australia, where India was also a part of it. And uh, we had um, aircrafts visiting Australia and, uh, you know, working on interoperability with the other air forces, which is uh, uh, really a thing which increases our capability and uh, jointmanship when it comes to a possible scenario in the future. In the process of this exercise, uh, aircrafts also went to uh, Coco Island, which is Australian territory, uh, north northwest of Australia, actually northwest of Australia. And uh, uh, that's, uh, you know, it gives, if we ever seek the permission in future to refuel there or something like that, uh, It'll give us a huge, um, what should I say, positive uh, insight into what is the facilities available and how do we go about it. All this can be planned at short notice also, that's not an issue. But if somebody's been there and interacted and it shows the awareness and the understanding the governments also have about these things. Because even in uh, the MS370, going missing, Indian aircrafts had participated in the search for that package and it was uh, ex-Australia that we had done that. But uh, having been to Australia officially, uh, it gives a much better uh, you know, view of how these two giant countries look at each other uh, in terms of uh, military. Uh, otherwise, we have a ton of Indians staying there in India. And uh, the aircrafts which Australia has and India have in common are um, the Herx and um, an amazing Herx. aircraft. Herculis. Yeah, and uh, amazing aircraft called the P-8 Poseidon. And uh, we have the P-8I and they have the P-8A. So um, P-8I is stands for India. A is for the rest of the world. So Indians have some special modifications on it vis-a-vis uh, -vis the rest of the world. It's a really fantastic uh, platform. It has uh, anti-submarine uh, warfare capabilities. It has anti-surface ship war warfare capabilities. It's got, it's armed. Unlike a normal, uh, uh, you know, Search and rescue because it does a lot of search and rescue also. Search and rescue and time reconnaissance aircraft. It is armed. It's got uh, harpoons, that is torpedoes, which are some two and a half tons. And it also has uh, harpoon missiles and it also has small torpedoes, uh, Mark 20, Mark 56. I mean, these numbers and names don't mean anything, but the fact is it's a potent platform. It's a, a regular Boeing 737 dash 800 or 900 which has the capability of flying uh, great distances over the sea and reaching there fast so if there is a threat or an unknown vessel say 600 miles from australia or new zealand or uh, norway or india or america all of these countries uh, and uk all of these countries operate this aircraft it can reach there in just about an hour's time and maintain station there for four or five hours and uh, see what is actually happening there and identify the ship and uh, then um, uh, loiter around that place to see what is exactly happening and uh, it can uh, it has got satellite communication it's got uh, really good communication per se it's got a, a inverse uh, synthetic aperture radar in the nose which can search for submarines about 250 miles 
so if it travels it travels about 490 miles in an hour that is the approximate speed but uh, on station it can stay for 4 hours and it can search 250 miles uh, max range is 250 miles so optimum must be less than that but the fact is that if it's 500 miles 1000 miles out and it can search for another 250 and it is traveling so much so fast you can realize what a large area it can actually cover uh, in the search for a submarine it's also got sonar boys uh, some 120 125 of them which can be dropped on the uh, suspected area and then it can take uh, inputs from it um, it's also got fantastic uh, you know uh, it can drop uh, payloads for uh, search and rescue so if there's a dinghy spotted after a aircraft has gone down or 10 dinghies or 20 dinghies it can actually airdrop supplies for them till a ship reaches because an aircraft can never rescue only a helicopter can rescue and if it is 500000 miles out at sea it's not possible for a rescue to take place um by an aircraft so it has to be a ship which reaches there so it can hold station monitor how these dinghies are drifting while uh, at the same time being able to uh, give real time updates to the surface vessels of, of where to come and what to do the reason uh, p8 uh, is so interesting is because in the recent past we've observed that the us navy has been sending p8s uh, the western side of the black sea these are us navy uh, aircrafts and uh, over the last few i mean i have not observed them uh, I, i could be wrong but i have not observed p8s ob- uh, operating there but uh, the funny thing is p8s are operating at a really low level Uh, just 10000 feet i they can fly at 500 feet also and uh, but 10000 feet means that the fuel consumption will be higher it need to refuel more often it will not be able to maintain station that much uh, that long also but the fact is it's in the area means they're doing the or at least observing something in the black sea which is a very interesting thing which might mean extra activity by any of the forces um, and uh, the thing is that it usually detects a submarine uh, which is just below the water not deep uh, inside the and it would normally uh, i mean this is outside my area of expertise but if some inputs are given from other sources it will be able to come to that station and even drop sonar boys and then it will be able to pick them up deep under water also but it's uh, it, these have been holding station in um, on uh, multiple days so it it seems to be a concentrated kind of a move so yeah this is a very interesting aircraft and most people have flown in a similar aircraft so uh, it can uh, fly it till about 1000 feet and come down really low i said 41000 feet it can climb till 41000 feet so if you see an aircraft if it or yourself if you stand on the first floor and look out of your balcony you can see certain amount but if you are standing on the 50th floor and looking out of your balcony you can see much greater so which is why uh, uh, a reconnaissance aircraft if it is flying higher not only does its fuel consumption reduces its range also increases to uh, what is probably the optimum range um, max range may or may not be used so it's a high high aircraft so um, it's it's an interesting development um these aircrafts uh, have not just operations over the sea they can operate over the land also and uh, that flexibility allows them to be deployed anywhere since it has a, a host of sensors and um, uh, what should i say radars and all it can uh, detect a lot of things which a normal aircraft may or may not be and it can be used to augment all the other existing uh, electronic warfare aircrafts uh, not electronic warfare early warning aircrafts a country might possess so yes it it can really help it was anywhere it can be it's a highly versatile aircraft it's see i i told you it's used across the world in uh, many countries so uh, um, there is Uh, if someone doesn't want to use it in a particular place it's limiting your own options and i'm sure no one does that